When we talk about the health of a coral, often we're talking about its color. But what color really is, is chemical composition. Live corals and dead corals have fundamentally different chemical properties that are based on the animal itself, the coral animal, and also something called the algal symbiont, the small algae that lives with and inside the coral polyp. That combination generates a chemical signature that we can see from the air. Our mapping from the air is unique. We use a technique called laser-guided imaging spectroscopy. It's a fancy term for 3D imaging of the seafloor, and then our spectrometer is able to see whether the corals are live or dead based on the spectral properties and the chemical content of those corals. When I talk about measuring chemical signatures, we can do that in the water with an underwater spectrometer. That's at the resolution that you see here, this small colony of, of coral polyps. When we fly in the air, we're actually seeing the chemistry of multiple corals all at one time. So we're seeing the average chemistry of this patch of live coral. So we're able to look at this both in the laboratory and with spectrometers to understand whether this coral is growing well and doing well relative to, say, this coral here. And you see different species of coral have different colors and thus different chemistries naturally. But you also see that this live coral and this live coral are very different than this dead coral. Reefs in Hawaii face the same type of threats that reefs face all around the world. That includes, for example, marine heat waves generated by climate change. These marine heat waves cause a phenomenon widely known as coral bleaching. In that process, corals literally turn white. A second type of threat is sedimentation and other pollutants that enter onto reefs from the short, near shore environment. A third type of uh, problem on reefs occurs with overfishing. Corals and fish have evolved for millions of years and rely upon one another. Break that bond and corals can suffer over time. by directing managers and decision makers on where to do coral reef restoration. Where on the reef has there been a decline and where can specialists go in, take action to improve reef conditions, and even outplant corals that are grown either in nurseries or grown nearby on other reefs. Whether a coral reef needs to be reflown each year depends on the rate of change. What kinds of uh, stresses and pressures are going onto that reef really matter. Uh, for example, was there a marine heat wave? Uh, you might want to fly before and after that heat wave so that you can see what the net effect is. Uh, has there been a, a pulse of land development near a reef? You might want to refly to see whether that reef has been impacted. So the cadence or the, the, the repeat frequency of flying is very much dependent on the stresses that we think these reefs are going through. We want to understand what the factors are uh, environmentally and genetically for the corals themselves that lead to this situation where there are persisting uh, reefs full of live corals despite all of these stresses. These refugia are really critical for us to understand their origin, what maintains them, and what we need to do to, uh, to protect them for future generations. Mind the bay.